artist okay. and you're stepping in the game, I would say that you need to have as much material as possible. If you're just recording and you're just pumping out one song a month, mm. there's other things that can work. There's other, there's other, there's other, there's right. other things you can do in life. Because <laughs> this, this is not for you. If you're an artist, you need to be recording so much that when you have a friend and you say, listen to my music, even if you're hot, your friend gets tired because he's like, bro, this is like the 500 song already. Can I go to the bathroom? I got to go home. So you need to keep beat. You need to keep, you have to have, because this is the thing about recording music. You might think you're hot, but the reality is this. Out of 100 songs, you might have three that are hot. Think about all these artists when they do interviews and somebody will say, so how many songs have you recorded for the album? Listen, man, I don't even know. They recorded so much material, but when it's time to choose songs, it'll be like, well, these 10 will go, and the rest will go right back in the vault. Then years later, after you know, we hear this artist, we love their image, we like them, and they know that the public will be more acceptable of that music, then it's like, okay, yeah, we could throw this little tidbit out, let's throw this on a mixtape, this is some unreleased tracks. Then you hear it and you're like, yeah, this is good, this is cool, I like this song. But those were songs that they probably had recorded a couple years ago. You have a lot of artists right now that have songs from three years ago that we're just hearing right now, and we're like, yo, this is hot. Not knowing they recorded it in 2014, but it's sitting in the vault, and that's what every artist, even producers, if you're a producer, don't come to me and say, I got a couple beats, and it just really be a couple beats. Don't play two beats and think <laughs> I'm gonna be like, man, he's two hits right now, man. Somebody needs to call Jay-Z. No, right like, now, fire. <laughs> Fire, like two little matches. <laughs> it's like, come on, you need to have so much stuff that people are just almost tired of you. Especially if you get a contact in the industry. You need to, every time they say, I don't like this. You need to so then where is, where is the balance of just putting out music or churning out making music all the time for the sake of making music and then really taking the time to reflect, like, where do I want to go? What is my brand? I you know what's funny about that? that a, a good point with that is I don't even know because I remember, and I'm gonna use this as an example. In the barbershop, there used to be this barber. He was like the craziest Gucci, Gucci man fan that I had met. Like, I'm saying crazy. So one day, Gucci sent him some promo stuff. So I take this kid, like, three weeks, he's like, bro, you a fan. And he, this is his exact statement. Yeah, I gotta listen to these tonight because you know Gucci had dropped three more mixtapes this week. And I was like, Gucci's philosophy is he just fed him. He just fed him. I, and I often wonder, was there ever a creative director around Gucci Man to worry to do his, you know, worry about it. I think he has more of one now. Probably not, yeah. But he just kind of just did what he did for the streets and kind of let it let it go there. And so I, I guess like he, he just kept feeding him. And I think nowadays with the social media, like you said, things are so microwave, you have to keep feeding him. But, but then it's I think that I think it also goes back to Gucci's brand though. His brand isn't really wrapped around the idea of quality. You know, mm -hmm. there's a certain feeling to it. There's a feeling that, I mean, I don't know a lot about him, but I think he lives the lifestyle that he's promoting. So he can go in there every day and give that energy because it's an authentic energy. So and he's selling a brand, not me. He's selling, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. He's selling his music, which is a part of his brand, and it's working because it's his authentic lifestyle. I think if there was a creative director around him in the beginning, they would have said, don't do this, but because of all that, it worked for him to keep putting out music. I know people that are fans and they'll admit, yeah, not every song is good, but right. it's the fact that he just pulls them out. He's, he's one of those rare artists that doesn't have to think about creativity. He yeah. doesn't have to say, what's the topic we're gonna discuss? Because people just love Gucci, man. So really there is no like, man, you need this hot beat right here. Gucci can go with any producer in the world. Even somebody that just made their first beat and rap on it give you a simple hook and some lines and people are gonna love it. Like the, the reality reality of that is that most artists, I don't even think an artist should even think like that. That's a, you have to be born with that. Because most artists are not gonna reach that that platform. It's crazy, Jay-Z's my favorite rapper and I don't feel like Jay could take that same formula and just yeah. say, I'm just gonna go in the studio and just say a simple hook Wait, and just rap. Well, well one, of the, one of the points you just brought up about that is Gucci was crazy enough to go in there and do that, and a lot of people probably shouldn't do that. But aren't the people who are real stars, the people that we really appreciate, isn't that exactly what they did, though? 